Continue reading the Holy Gospel according to St. John with the explanation by Blessed Philip, chapter 8, verses 56 through 59. Continue reading explanation. But he again withdrew from them and hid, lest he die before it was the time. Lest he die before it was time. How did he hide? Not by backing into a corner of the temple, slipping into a small room, or ducking behind the wall or pillar. By divine power, he simply made himself invisible to his enemies. He went out through the midst of them and so passed by. Never before has such a thing been done by anyone. Behold how the Lord fulfilled all that he came to do. He instructed the Jews thoroughly concerning himself and the Father. He revealed his true excellence and freedom from sin and explained that the only shameful servitude is that of sin. He omitted nothing that was needful for the Jews' enlightenment. For this, the Jews stoned him. Finally, he left them since they refused all correction. Know that the men who stoned him are the same ones about whom the evangelist said earlier they believed in him. It turns out that their faith was not true, but only a fleeting, lukewarm sympathy for Christ's teaching. Chapter 9, verses 1 through 2. And as Jews passed by, he saw him. As, and as Jesus passed by, he saw a man who was blind from his birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Explanation The Lord leaves the temple in order to dampen the anger of the Jews a little and turns to the healing of the blind man. By this miracle, he attempts to soften their stubborn disbelief, though they divert no belief from it. At the same time, he shows them that he did not speak idly or boastfully when he said, before Abraham was, I am. Behold this miracle, the like of which has never been seen. Others have restored the sight of blind men, but never of men born blind. It is clear that Christ performed this miracle as God who is before Abraham. To prove this to the Jews, he intentionally approached the blind man, and not vice versa. When they see the Lord looking Intently at the blind man, the disciples ask, Who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? This question appears to be illogical. How could the man have seen before he was born? The apostles, of course, did not accept the foolish notion that the soul commits sin in another world before the body is formed and is punished by being joined to the body. Being fishermen, they would never have heard of this teaching of the Greek philosophers. Their question then might appear foolish, but not to one who is attentive. The apostles heard Christ tell the paralytic, Behold, thou art made whole, see no more, lest the worst thing come into, unto thee. Now they see the blind man and wonder. The paralytic was punished because of his sins, but what do you say about this man? How could he have been punished for his sins? He was blind from birth. Did his parents sin? That also cannot be, for a child is not punished for his father's sins. Thus, their question was an, an expression of perplexity, which the Lord deplies for explaining, neither have this man sin. How could he before he was born, nor his parents? Christ does not say simply, his parents did not sin. Applying that they were without fault, he adds that he was born blind. His parents did sin, but that was not the cause of his blindness. It would be unjust to charge the sins of the parents to the children who have done nothing wrong. God makes this clear through the words of the prophets. Let the, this parable no longer be spoken. The fathers have eaten unripe grapes, and the children's teeth shall be set on edge. Glory to your Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.